The Two Wheel Tuesday I'll never forget is the one where I said bye to my friend and 30 minutes later he passed away. I don't exactly know what happened, but I know the police report said it had something to do with a high rate of speed. He died here. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge. And I actually didn't find out he died until the next day. We were actually supposed to go on a ride. I was texting him all night, but I never got a reply back. So I checked his Facebook, and I saw a bunch of people posting, rest in peace. This is the most dangerous key I own. It's the key to this. 200 horsepower, 90 foot-pounds of torque. And if you don't respect this, it'll f***ing kill you. According to the US DOT, we're 28 more times more likely to die in an accident involving these. And data from 2020 shows that 34% of fatalities were from us speeding. A lot of y'all in the comment section always wonder why I don't speed when I'm riding in traffic. That's not to say I don't have fun in the canyons, but most of the time when I do open it up, it's at the track. Because the truth is, these have no business being on the streets. Besides the fact that these are uncomfortable as to ride on the street. It's also extremely boring to putt around in first and second gear. And to be 100% real, 200 horsepower is way more than we need for the street and at the track. And one of the main reasons these are even being sold to the public in street trim, it's to satisfy homologation rules in World Superbike. As a way to spread motorcycle awareness every single day, I teamed up with Helite Moto to give away one of their airbag vests or an airbag backpack. And every week I'm gonna pop one of these off in honor of everybody that we've lost on twos. And if you ride, you've lost somebody or you know of somebody that's died on twos. Details on how to enter is in the comments below. This is a thousand dollar vest so you squids better enter this shit. So I had two really bad crashes in my whole 15 years of riding. The first one I was doing a 12 o'clock wheelie and I was just in a t-shirt and jeans. The second really bad one I was test riding a Ducati 1098S. The roads were a little damp. I had just moved to Washington State and at the time I only knew how to ride two ways. Fast or faster. I didn't have my helmet. All I had was my hoodie and some gloves. I high sided the bike making a ride at the stop sign that was about 50 50 feet away from his garage. Yes, I did end up buying that bike, but I also had a lot of pain in my wrist for about a year and a half. And the first thing that hit the asphalt was actually my head. Having my hoodie on saved me from a cracked skull. This is one of my race suits. This was from like a 90 mile an hour low side in the canyons, and this was from a really fast high side at the track. Both crashes were pretty violent. In the canyons, my bike and myself slid all the way across the oncoming traffic's lane, straight into the dirt. At the track, well, if you've ever been to a track, you know how it goes. You don't really remember what happens, especially at a high speed high side. But both times, I walked away way because I was wearing this. I didn't even have one f***ing bruise. Now I'm not saying I haven't experienced being a squid because I was young and dumb once but now I'm f***ing old and I got people looking forward to me coming home after a ride. Alright we're gonna try riding with the heat light today. I actually haven't even ridden with it. Hard to find this button that's the only thing with this electronic one. Alright that flashing pink that means we're good. Put this sucker on. <laughs> Not supposed to show any red. That a little bit tighter. All right, good to go. The only thing I wish this vest had was pockets in the front. Reaching for my wallet inside my jacket, that was pretty freaking annoying, but it's fine, I guess. Oh, geez, spilled gas again. Ah, no paper towels. <laughs> All right, I went dumpster diving. I just don't want this crap on my sweater. Alright, first impressions of the Heelite vest. This is actually the track version. So it fits a little bit tighter than like probably the Turtle 2, which seems like it's a more street friendly version. That's not to say you can't ride the track version on the street. There is like a three or $400 difference between the two. And if you ride with an Icon vest, then <laughs> this might be the one for you. It's very similar to the Icon vest in that, you know, it straps and fits you really snug. Obviously the difference is this one will protect you a lot more, but it does cost a lot more than the Icon vest. Now I'm not sure if you can wear a backpack with this. Personally, I don't see why not. You might just want to keep the backpack a little bit more loose and I think they suggest that on the website obviously because when it deploys it's gonna need some room to stretch <laughs> you don't want the backpack constricting you but yeah it's pretty comfortable and it keeps me pretty warm <laughs> like my chest area anyway I'm not rocking my jacket today like I said this is kind of tight and it's meant for track use I think I'm gonna be wearing it in the summer when I'm actually wearing my full suit should I be wearing it all the time yes Yes, I should. But when I'm out here motovlogging, I'm not really doing anything wild. I'm pretty vigilant and, you know, at the cross sections, I look for cars that could be speeding. 
I really don't want to get T-boned out here. You know, the glorification of like that straight line highway racing, it's kind of wild on YouTube right now. Those videos seem to do really, really well. And personally, I'm not willing to risk my life to do those kinds of videos, man. Granted, it's probably more safe to go in a straight line down the highway where everybody's going the same direction and there's not very many intersections. But what if like my front wheel falls off because I didn't tighten it correctly or something? Everybody always asks me like, what's the fastest I've ever gone on a motorcycle? And I can tell you exactly how fast. It was 187 on my first 1000cc, the CBR 1000 R. It was on this stretch of highway down in Lake Tahoe, and I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. At the time, it didn't really like phase me. It was just like, oh, that's cool, that thing's fast. My first 1000cc. But now that I'm older, I'm like, holy shit, I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. And I think I was wearing Converse too. I wasn't wearing like real riding shoes. It's scary for me to think of it now. All the things that I did when I was dumb on a motorcycle. It wasn't until like later on in my riding career and when my friends started just dying that I realized, hey man, that could be me. One of these days when I leave my house, I may not come back. I mean, you know, it's, it's like I, I laugh about it, but it's just kind of one of those things. If you ride a motorcycle and you've been riding for a long time, it's just one of those things you, you accept. It's the risk that you're, you're willing to take. And these days, I'm like taking less and less risks. Some of y'all may not know that I'm a teacher, but one of the classes I teach is a finance class. One of the things students always ask me is how much should I invest? And there's a simple rule to this. The younger you are, the more financial risks you can take. The older you are, the less financial risks you should take. They call it the 100 year rule or something like that. Or basically you take your age, you subtract it by 100, and whatever that number is that's the percent you should be investing into things like the stock market real estate gold silver whatever the hell you want to invest in and there's a certain way you split up your investment portfolio whether that's cash equities etc etc but i'm not gonna go there side note i really do want to start like a marketing and branding and finance and business channel because i know those channels really do well but maybe that's something i can incorporate in adobe moto i don't know you guys let me know speaking of adobe moto we just hit 70k thank you guys so much in november i think i was at like 20 or 25 thousand and to think we added like another 50,000 subscribers like this is insane. I love you guys Oh, yeah, this vest is pretty comfy man. I could see myself wearing this all day long This one is a size large and it fits pretty comfortable The other one I have the manual version is a size medium now if I was wearing like my full suit I would probably just rock the medium because it's nice and tight, but if I'm just street riding I would get a large. I'm five foot five, 175, 180 ish pounds. I got pretty broad shoulders and chest. They do have a measurement guide on their website, so go check that out if you're interested in one of these. I think these things are really cool. And even if they didn't send me one, I was gonna buy one eventually anyway. I was saving up for one. So shout out to Helite Moto for sending out a couple of these for me. They said they're gonna send me out the pants and the backpack to demonstrate and try out too. So stick around for that if you're interested in safety. <laughs> you know what I need to do one day? Is a taco truck stop, man. Man, that shit. If I was hungry right now, I would go to a taco truck. That would be the ultimate appreciation stop, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for signaling. Like, that person signaled way early. <laughs> I love that. When I see a biker behind me and I'm about to turn, I definitely try to signal as early as possible. And I look in my rear view mirror just to make sure they can see that I'm braking or, or slowing down. One of the things I try not to do these days is be on cars' butts, man. Yes, we have a shorter stopping distance than them, but you never know, man. You never know. Unfortunately, I do not have a discount code to give you guys for a Helite vest, but hopefully maybe in the future. I'm not getting paid to promote them at all, but they are sending me a bunch of crap worth thousands of dollars. So I want to help them out and get some sales and, you know, help promote motorcycle safety awareness, man. I think it should be every day. I don't think it should just be in May. Yes, it's motorcycle safety awareness month, but I think as a content creator, I feel like it's almost like a duty to like, hey guys, let me preach about motorcycle safety every few videos. Let's go do this appreciation stop, baby, because it's been a while, man. Let's go. Golly gee whiz. The Adobo Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Look at this, bros. Oh my God. It's Saturday and it's beautiful today. My goodness gracious. One of these days, some cops gonna fucking stop and give me some shit. I can't even see what. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't see the kickstand. Whew. Okay, the vest. The vest is nice. <laughs> but the Aprilia RSV4 is nice. Uh, whew, golly gee, look at this bike, man. <sighs> I love these appreciation stops. This thing is annoying. Like when I'm not wearing my vest, 
I don't really know where to put this. But I guess that encourages you to put it on every time you ride, right? So, <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> but yeah, man, Woo. this is gorgeous. My goodness gracious, look at this. Woo. What a beautiful motorcycle. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day. There's no traffic today. Look at this. Look at that five, man. It took him like 50 million years to finish this construction over here. <laughs> this construction was going on when I moved out here and then they finally finished. I can't believe I, I got to see that. I never thought it would happen. Maybe they didn't have enough Mexicans working for them or something. <laughs> I can count the number of friends that I've lost on a motorcycle, but I can't count the number of people that I know of, acquaintances, etc. that have died on a bike. Motorcycles are just... I guess that's part of it, right? That's part of riding. The dangers. I got a company sending me fairings. That's gonna be a cool video. Let's give it a start. Ooh, my gosh. If I could give my younger self any advice when I started riding motorcycles, it would be to grow the fuck up, bro. <laughs> like, grow the f up, dude. Go get a suit, take it to the track, whatever you gotta do to be safe. Don't speed. <laughs> if that's the kind of stuff that you do, hey man, that's on you, right? But just know, there's somebody out there that loves you, and they'd be really sad if you were gone. When I found out that my homie had died just 30 minutes after I said bye to him, that moment was surreal, man. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had any moment like that in my motorcycle riding time career, whatever the hell you want to call it. A moment of epiphany, dude. A moment of like, dang, that could be me. And honestly, if I have to be chased by cops or like race an H2 or whatever the heck, H4 and a half down the highway, if that's what I have to do to get views, if that's what I have to do to grow moto vlogging, I don't want none of that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Everybody that comes in here enjoys the funny roasts or like the attitude that I have towards motorcycling or moto vloggers or like my stupid opinions on sport bikes. All you guys that like enjoy that shit, I appreciate you. The reason I went on a YouTube hiatus was because I didn't want to die for this. Oh shit! There's a, oh shit! There's an RC8. Hold on, man. There's an RC8. I gotta go check this out, dudes. <laughs> You don't see a lot of these bikes, man. You don't. I'm gonna go check it out. Hold up. Hold up. Okay. Ugh. I think I'm just gonna make a U-turn here. It's an RC8. Look, man, I don't get excited by a lot of bikes, but this RC8 is pretty cool. I haven't seen an orange one in real life. This one looks sick. And there's a CBR right next to it, too. It looks like a thousand RR. Damn, dude. That's crazy. Woo. It's a little beat up, I can tell, but it's sick. Damn, man. Hell yeah, it looks like the guy rides the shit out of it. RCA 1190. Hell yeah, dude. It's crazy. I don't see a lot of these, man. CVR, too. Golly, look at that chain. Holy fuck. <laughs> Got the Marchesini wheels. Hell yeah, dude. Thing's sick. Beautiful bikes. A lot of people ask too why I don't go to like Two Wheel Tuesdays or meets. And it's not because my buddy died after a Two Wheel Tuesday. The truth is I just think they're boring as fuck. <laughs> That's the truth, man. Like, after like 10 years of Two Wheel Tuesdays, it's like, okay, okay. <laughs> I've been to enough. <laughs> I have been to enough, man. I just want to ride my freaking bike and I don't want to stand around. I don't get a lot of chances to ride my bike. Well, more chances now because of a double moto, but back then <laughs> it was like, look, I just want to ride. I'm not trying to stand around with you dingbats. One of the biggest things I've learned 
like in all my time of riding is self-control you got cars that don't want to race you because you're on a bike i mean it's kind of dumb <laughs> but they'll try and then you got other dudes that want to line up against you and honestly i don't really know what that proves i'm not saying it's not fun because it is like it's pretty fun to like line up and do like straight line highway racing and if you haven't seen that video where i tried straight line racing for like a whole season i even took it to the track go check it out it's right here i have a lot of respect for those guys but for me to do it on the highway uh yeah it's not it's not worth it <laughs> it's not freaking worth it man i don't even think i do it like in the canyons well I, okay i'm not even that good at it <laughs> let's let's get that straight okay <laughs> But the second thing is like, dude, what if a deer pulls out, bro? <laughs> yeah, like, God, what if Bambi pulls out and you're just like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna end your day. I just don't want that. I'm not like discouraging anybody to stay away from that. Look, man, do your thing. I'm, I'm a big proponent of ride your ride. I don't give a shit. But there's definitely a place and time for it. I think a lot of these guys on YouTube, they do it on the roads that they, they know. Like, it's like, it's like me in the canyons, right? People think I'm like really, really fast in the canyons, but what they don't realize is like, that's the road I ride all the time, <laughs> you know? And these guys, these are like the same roads that they ride all the time. You can't fool me with your like ND filter and 24 frames per second making it look like it's faster than it is, right? There's those kinds of tricks too. But at the end of the day, these guys know their roads and they probably like know the times that cops aren't around so they can avoid tickets or they know the spots where cops just it's just impossible for cops to hang out. I think a lot of these guys are very calculated when it comes to street racing sport bikes. Also, there's like no chance in hell that a state trooper in an SUV will ever catch us on one of these. And some states do have like a no chase law or something like that. I think we have one here. But again, it's that whole how much are you willing to risk thing, right? Surprisingly, not that cold right now. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I had some coffee before this, so that's why there's no coffee stop. But it's pretty nice. This Costco jacket is the shit, man. I love it. <laughs> It won't protect me from a fall, but it protects me from this wind. <laughs> anyway, it is what it is, man. Share this video. Spread the motorcycle safety awareness. I always tell my friends to ride safe. My friends don't always listen to me. I actually told that motherfucker before he left to ride and safe and you know the ego got the best of them but you know what that's okay man that's just part of the risk we're all willing to take 